Hey, what's going on, guys? This is Chris Corey with So Mifa. That's me in the middle of sofa. And I have another build video for you guys. I'm going to show you how to build this really cool looking sleek home theater PC. And this is a mini ITX build uh, with an AMD processor. I think you guys are really, really going to enjoy this device and this build. Um, and if you love HTPCs like I do, please uh, like this video, subscribe to this channel because I will have more videos coming up. And make sure that you check out my first build video. It was a $500 guide and I have it somewhere, annotation somewhere around here. So uh, let's just go ahead and get into it. All right, guys. Um, I always like to stress uh, the importance of, of building PCs with quality, quality parts. Just like Steve Jobs' philosophy, he said he wouldn't be able to sleep at night if he sold people uh, junk computers junk with junk parts. Um, at same thing with me. I make sure that I research these parts to the T to see how they perform and how... Um, other customers feel about these parts. So I go to, you know, Newegg and Amazon and make sure that these parts have um, at least a four star uh, rating or four egg rating. So uh, let's go ahead and get into it. First up, we have the chassis. It's pretty hard to find these chassis in the United States, uh, but there are some manufacturers out there or retailers out there who actually sell these chassis. But uh, first up is the Straycom FC Evo. And I just absolutely love Straycom chassis. I most of them use them with um, all of my builds because of their elegant uh, simplicity uh, and their quality and size. Uh, the chassis fits a mini ITX motherboard. It has two USB 3.0 ports in the front. Uh, slot for a slim slot loading drive and a spot for an IR receiver. Internally, it can fit uh, one 2.5 inch drive plus one 3.5 inch hard drive and has an expansion slot for one low profile expansion card of your choice. Uh, it's compatible with a nano PSU uh, power supply. So keep that in mind when thinking about price because they can be rather expensive. Next is the motherboard. This is a pretty cool motherboard. I've had my eye on for uh, a while. Uh, one of the main features was that it had an HDMI input. This is important because if you have a device like a gaming console and you want to be able to plug it in, uh, you can, and basically it's a simple keyboard shortcut to switch to that input. Also, it came with a Wi-Fi card. And, oh yeah, I had to remove uh, the brackets in the red before installing the CPU and CPU fan. I didn't put it in the video, but refer to the manual to actually figure out how to remove that if you decide to, to use this. Uh, build video. It's very simple to remove. Um, and in the motherboard, I'll be installing the AMD A8 7600. This is a very cool processor. Uh, AMD processors are known for their internal graphics, and this processor is no slouch. It outdoes Intel processors in its price range and is really great for. And it's really great for casual gaming uh, like Minecraft or League of Legends. Uh, but don't expect great results for modern games that need a lot of power. Also, this processor is great for HTPC use because it can be downclocked in the BIOS to 45 watts. It actually comes at 65 watts. So to have that extra uh, room for you know, parts, uh, expansion, uh, you know, down clocking it to six, 45 watts, I'm sorry, is a good thing. 
and it still uh, provides plenty of power and performance at 45 watts. But this APU does have a downside. It doesn't handle 4K very well. And many customers have complained about high CP usage and stuttering when trying to play uh, 4K. So keep that in mind if you're looking for a future-proof HTPC. But when it comes to 1080p, it handles that pretty well. From what I've read, Intel processors uh, do a pretty good job at handling 4K. So uh, keep that in mind. Next is our CPU fan. This is the Noctua, and I hope I'm pronouncing this right, NHL um, 9A low profile CPU fan. Noctua makes uh, some of the best fans, and it won't disappoint. Plus, they have some awesome packaging. Um, there is a PCI E slot on the motherboard, and I will be installing a capture card so I can use this PC to capture things I do on other PCs. Uh, this is an Avermeter Game Broadcaster HD, and this is a great low profile capture card. But I want you to remember that it's up to you uh, as far as what you want to install in that slot. Uh, with this build, I have tried the AMD R7250 low profile graphics card in dual graphics and this was a very cool setup though I couldn't play modern games on high settings at 1080p dual graphics looks very promising uh, in the future especially for low profile HTPC builds because I got something like a 30 to 40 percent increase in my graphics power also, you could install a cable car tuner like the Seton Infinity R and over the air tuner like the HodgePodge 1229 and give this PC some DVR functionality. Basically, the choice is yours. For memory, I installed 8GB of AMD uh, Radeon R9 DDR3 2400. For storage, I installed the Samsung 840 Evo 200. I'm sorry, 120 gigabyte SSD. This, it's always for me and my bills, SSD or nothing. Um, SSDs speed up your system so, so much compared to hard drives. So my operating system and my key programs will definitely go on my SSD. I will use external storage for everything else. I threw a Blu-ray drive into this build. This is optional. I haven't had much luck with slim slot loading uh, Blu-ray drives lasting very long. Plus, in order to play Blu-rays, you need to use software like PowerDVD uh, that can be very costly, um, around 90 bucks. I used a 150-watt PSU plus 150-watt AC-DC converter to provide power to this bill. Uh, They can be a little expensive. I want you to keep that in mind. Um, Windows 8.1 Pro uh, was my operating system of choice, mainly because of Windows Media Center. Uh, once there is a DVR, I'm sorry. Once there is a DVR solution in Windows 10, I will be switching over. Um, I have my fingers crossed that Silicon Dust Home Run HD DVR uh, will be a great software. So Silicon Dust, I hope you guys uh, have something really good for me. I also install Straycom's IR receiver. Uh, and a case fan. The only tool that you will be needing for this build is a Phillips head screwdriver and make sure that you use a static free surface and an anti-static wristband and you can attach that to uh, the case as you work on uh, things that's going into your motherboard. Alright guys, uh, let's get into the actual build video.
guys I want to show you how fast this PC starts up and a few other things I actually have my thin mini ITX bill plugged into my mini ITX bill through my capture card and I also have the Xbox 360 plugged into the HDMI um, input on uh, the motherboard of the thin mini ITX bill but let me show you start up first don't pay attention to the Xbox 360 screen that's up right now. And let me show you how fast this PC starts up. The important thing about a fast startup uh, with an HD PC is when you get home and your computer is down, you want it to start up as fast as possible and not really take too much time. And as you can see, this this PC starts up very very fast. I was actually very surprised on how fast it started up. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go into Aver Media uh, Media Center 3D, and this is the capture software for the Aver Media capture card. And as you can see, I have my thin mini ITX bill actually connected through the PC through that capture card and I am using um, Sodeco's air keyboard to control both of the PCs I actually have two of them and I'll do a video later on on these um, actual keyboards That was a little glitch with the sound, uh, but that goes away pretty quick. But as you can see, if I wanted to record what was going on on this PC, I could. And it's a great thing that Avermedia actually allows you to view what's going on 
uh, within this PC. I may not have an internet connection set up right now. I actually don't. But that's cool. But you can see how that works. And if you have a person who uh, wants to watch something else or do something else, having two PCs hooked up in one place is a great thing. And you can also um, plug in a gaming console. It works best with the Xbox 360 or the PS3. I know they're old, but since the other gaming consoles play in 1080p, this doesn't work um, as well, but it will capture whatever you need it to in 1080p. All right, but let me get out of this. And I want to show you guys one other thing. Uh, since I have my Xbox 360 hooked into um, my PC through the motherboard, uh, the thin mini, I'm sorry, the mini ITX build, all I have to do is press Alt C and it switches the input. And now I can do whatever on my Xbox 360. And if you want to hook up another gaming console, PS4 or Roku or any type of other device into this device through HDMI, that should be no problem. And to go back, all I have to do is press Alt C. Simple as that. And once I shut down the computer, it will still allow me to use whatever device I have plugged in. So I have my Xbox 360, and that's why you saw this in the beginning of the video. All right, thank you guys. Please like this video. Please subscribe. Um, if you have any comments, please leave a comment. And I thank you guys for watching.